Hello, everyone, and welcome to our MediaKind session today. This session is part of a wider series that we have at MediaKind called MediaKind Explore. Um, if you check out uh, what's happening on MediaKind.com, you'll see a variety of other talks that we've done. Uh, you can watch them in short form or in the, the, the full uh, episode. You can also check out uh, a number of uh, application papers that we have related to our discussion topics, as well as blogs and, and other videos and explainers that we have. Um, you'll find uh, a wealth of, of industry uh, information at what's happening at MediaKind.com. So today's session um, is uh, about uh, at TV advertising and how um, we're, it's being reshaped with, um, with the emergence of 5G. This will be an exciting talk. Um, we'll, uh, we have um, uh, a session and then a QA session planned at the tail end of today's discussion. Uh, today we'll discuss key challenges around advertising and 5G, digital consumer experience and personalization, new monetization opportunities leveraged by 5G, and of course, then um, we'll be happy to uh, field some questions. If you have questions throughout the series, please uh, put those into the, the uh, chat box, and we will we'll field those as many as we can at the end. Again, we're so glad that you're joining us. Um, my name's Lisa Osaker, I'm Vice President of Marketing and Communications here at MediaKind. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Angelique, who is part of our marketing team, and um, she'll get us kicked off. Thank you very much, Lisa. So hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our insight session on TV advertising reshaped with 5G. I'm Angelique Everard, head of EMEA Marketing and Communications at MediaKind, and I will be chairing our insight session today. And I am very fortunate to be joined by an extremely knowledgeable panel with Paulo Donavan from MediaKind. Hi, Paulo, how are you doing today? Hi, good afternoon. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good, good, very well. I'm super ready for this session today. And Ganesh Kumar, uh, who is a consulting partner at WePro leading 5G industry solutions. How are you today, Ganesh? I'm doing good, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. So you have heard it, two distinct companies and participants getting together to talk, which I would like to introduce. So Paul Odenavan is the Director of Market Development for the EMEA Advertising Business at MediaKind. Paul received a Bachelor in Engineering in Electronics and Computer Systems from Loughborough University during 2003, and since then has spent most of his professional career in TV and media, beginning at Amino Communications, then moving on to roles at Scientific Atlanta, Cisco, Microsoft, and Ericsson. He also spent years in a closely related role at a successful Cambridge-based IoT startup, Alert Me, that evolved to become Hive from British Gas. Nowadays, Paul works closely with media kinds customers and partners across the EMEA region to help them understand the rapidly evolving advertising market and how they can better compete and differentiate in the media industry. So super happy, Paul, to have you here in our insight session today. And Ganesh Kumar uh, received his Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science from the University of Mumbai in 1993. He has 25 years of global IT experience in solution sales, consulting, practice and delivery in industry verticals such as communications, technology and media. His focus has been majorly around video services, gaming and advertising. He is a futurist and passionate on emerging technologies like 5G, for such as uh, our uh, topic today, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality and edge computing. So, uh, currently, Ganesh is a consulting partner at Wipro, uh, leading 5G industry solutions, building use cases and business solutions for enterprises and consumer group with 5G as catalyst to create new user experiences and new monetization and revenue streams for uh, customers. So, you have heard from Lisa what is the uh, format of the session today. And so, I will start directly with uh, Paul and I will have the the first 
ask to you, which is, you know, Paul, in terms of the experience and FAGI, um, what do you think some of the challenges are around the advertising experience on 5G and Ganesh, if you can then uh, complete this with how can we solve actually these challenges? Thank you for that lovely introduction, Angelique. Um, I think some of the, the biggest advantages of 5G are also going to introduce some of the biggest challenges as well. So Ericsson in their 2020 mobility reports uh, state that data is expected to grow four times in the next five years to 160 exabytes a month, which is a, a huge figure. Uh, and an increasing proportion of that is going to be video. So that means more people watching more video, with consumers increasingly expecting a personalized viewing experience, especially on their personal or mobile devices. That has to include advertising if it's going to stay relevant to the consumer as they engage with more and more video services. Uh, the software-centric approach to 5G with more processing power packed towards the edge of the network introduces a fantastic opportunity for distributed processing capacity and the use and reuse of existing cloud technologies as part of that network. Now, understanding the best way to architect that and deploy that software will be a huge challenge that um, operators, broadcasters, and D2C vendors have to address with, uh, with very, very strong partnerships. 5G, uh, it can provide new data sources, whether it be more accurate data um, for, uh, for location, for example, based on smaller cells in high density areas, uh, or maybe even new data coming in from IoT devices associated with the consumer. Now, utilizing this data in a way that adds value to the consumer whilst respecting their privacy is going to be a challenge, but also a key to the success of advertising in the 5G space. Uh, at the moment, I think we have to acknowledge that 5G devices and networks are not as widely deployed as we like, that we are seeing a rapidly evolving ecosystem. Uh, we saw the recent launch of the, the iPhone 12, Hans Vestberg, the Verizon CEO, talked about their planned network expansions in the US uh, through 2021. Uh, in the UK, we're seeing network providers providing 5G for no additional cost over 4G as they roll out their networks. And in the Android ecosystem, 5G has been supported on devices for some time now, but it's very, very quickly becoming standard on mid-range, not just high-end devices as well, which will really help drive adoption. Yeah, the number of connected TV and OTT platforms is exploding over the last five years. With 5G, the expectation is that experience is becoming the core in advertising. That is ads that are immersive and personalized. Dynamic and contextual ad serving, knowing the persona and the purpose is key to the experience. It will decide the brand image on the individual in terms of it creating a positive appeal, or is it making an individual irritable with intrusiveness of the hacks? I agree with Paul that video is the most consumed content on the internet today, and 5G will have a massive impact on, on the video. Given the increase in mobile speeds, that is speeds what we are looking across is about 10 times uh, you know, faster than the current 4G networks. Uh, in fact, according to the Cisco Visual Networking Index uh, white paper, globally video traffic will account for about 82% of the traffic by 2022. So reliable connectivity with the likes of 5G will be key to create that experience or the new experience that we call. We are also seeing connected TV is gaining traction in uh, especially the advertising is gaining traction in and becoming a key component of any brand's overall strategy. In next five years, in this space, advertising will continue to grow as it responds to the user's growing demand for personalization, hyper-targeting, and interactive advertising. In this, what we see across is edge computing is going to play a very critical or vital role in improving the overall digital experiences as it will drive reliability and address latency issues to enhance the overall consumer experience. Edge-based analytics with data at the edge will improve the experience in terms of the video consumption, better engagement, and extreme personalization. Programmatic vendors will need to follow the carrier's lead and adopt distributed edge computing models to optimize performance for 5G and keep up with the type of experience that the consumers are expecting. It is important that content and ad decisioning is housed close to the consumer to ensure ads loading time will keep up with the 5G capabilities. In fact, you know, the next important thing is also in terms of, you know, looking at the, uh, the data sources. It is important to move away from the centralized deterministic databases. You know, in a 5G world, we are talking about probabilistic data that will become more robust 
due to the impending explosion of iot devices each a new potential data source in itself this has the capacity to move the industry's focus towards building high quality training data sets and algorithms rather than just the quantity of deterministic data data collection will be massive from many devices and variables and that needs to be handled further processed on the edge to provide that real time insights so data driven strategy to define the targeted advertising to the consumer is again a very important factor with 5g we will see the growth in devices wearables coming into new wearables coming into the play we'll also see that with 5g the post smartphone era meaning that it's not going to be you know just a smartphone piece but it's also about the entire machine to machine communication happening with iot devices and machines taking the center stage there will be new ad formats for multiple devices that will create a new string of opportunities for the advertisers also there will be a need to check on the usage of fewer data tag and fewer ad tags and reduce the error by bidding for efficiency so there is a lot of good excitement that we see both from consumers and advertisers in fact large numbers of consumers are expecting consistent and better quality of video streaming you know quick ad loads and further they believe that 5g will benefit augmented reality uh, advertisers are expecting a new a new and new creative formats coming into the play with 5g and they are already uh, planning uh, in this regard so we are seeing an exciting times ahead in this regard definitely exciting times ahead and you know moving more from the experience to the digital consumer so how do you see consumers today in our digital world and their expectations so the way so digital consumer today is all about smart devices we are talk about smartphones smart watches you know smart wearables all coming into the play so digital consumer today expects extreme personalization and it is important that for that to happen we need to get a 360 degree view of a consumer's digital life with 5g extreme personalization will come into reality with edge based analytics that will deepen the understanding of the changing consumer and engage with consumers meaningfully and respectfully across digital platforms and channels i see advanced analytics with artificial intelligence and machine learning te techniques you know on the edge will create that contextual hacks based on the persona purpose and location it will require enterprises to enable taxonomy of unique and data privacy regulatory compliant details of a consumer into audience segments that advertisers can use to enhance audience targeting across all channels so we are seeing that digital consumer will see growth in devices new variables coming into the play we'll also see with 5g you know as i said that you know it's not just about smartphone but many other uh, you know iot devices taking a center stage so we are seeing this as a very big trend in fact by 2021 it is predicted that there will be about 29 billion connected devices these devices may not always be connected on the broadband internet but they will be connected to each other with machine to machine communication in fact 5g is one of the key dimension is machine to machine communication also according to you know uh, one of the uh, 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 you know uh, uh, analysts it's also about you know that Uh, a lot of uh, mobile ads are coming into the play in fact about over 20000 companies have bought mobile ads in 2019 over 125 companies have you know uh, we are seeing that about are dedicated about a million dollars to mobile ads we are seeing you know big players like uh, nbc coca cola even the tiktok uh, you know where mobile ad is uh, you know they are the one of the top uh, players in that so with data exchange that i speaks advertising advertisements and landing pages will load faster on mobile phones and desktops all this will reduce the number of visitors dropping off because of loading delays so for a digital consumer to be involved ads will require to be immersive and interactive advertisements will need to be very compelling creative and high resolution ads will need to engage the digital consumer across multiple devices that uh, you know an individual uses so 5g will enable that interactive content with ultra high definition live streaming of videos or gaming etc that will come into the play and thereby advert for the advertisers it is a big opportunity to explore new revenue stream on the interactive content also ar vr can create new immersive experiences enabled with 5g in fact augmented reality can bring high quality interactive overlays as an advertising medium in fact in important uh, you know uh, games or viewing you know you can create those 3d ads and you know keep uh, engage and interact with the 
consumers. So we are seeing growth in digital ad spending definitely happening. And in fact, uh, according to eMarketer, uh, they suggest they have suggested that about, about worldwide digital ad spending will achieve about 2.4 percent uh, growth this year. You know, especially during these trying times. Uh, so, so we are definitely seeing digital consumers' expectation is very very high, and accordingly, the advertising and other you know uh, have to match it. Uh, you know, in terms of immersiveness, interactivity, and keeping them engaged in the whole process. Thank you very much for uh, this great overview, uh, Ganesh. And so, uh, moving on more for for the content owners and the operators that are listening to us today. And um, and, and Paul, um, how do you think can five G and and um, this monetization uh, options for for the content owners and operators who are listening to us today? So I think the, the monetization requirements and options in, in 5G will really depend on the services you're looking to provide and the, the parts of the overall ecosystem that you own and therefore control. So content providers, whether they be operators themselves with their own TV offerings um, or broadcasters or DTC offerings, they can already expect around four times the revenue from targeted or addressable advertising with one of the variables often being location. Now, 5G then starts to open up some new interesting use cases for very close targeting of adverts based on location. So, for example, if I'm watching a video as I arrive at a transit hub, such as a railway station, uh, the advert I'm served could be for a coffee shop or a, a cafe chain in that location, which is therefore directly relevant to me and highly personalized. What this also does is open up the advertising ecosystem to, um, to, to new advertisers, to advertisers who traditionally would not necessarily be interested in the video space. That brings in more competition, that increases the, um, the ad revenue that the content owners can expect to receive as well. So it's really a win-win situation for everyone and very, very advantageous all around. Um, the operators themselves who are deploying the 5G networks are, are looking at quite large investments and they need to recoup some of this and enabling video services as part of a 5G offering is a good way to bring in additional revenues. So um, some operators will charge their consumers to upgrade to 5G um, and others such as in the UK market will actually just be a, a no cost add on. So by adding value to the video services, it's a very, very good way of, of recouping that investment and also encouraging consumers to want to remove forward into the 5G space as well. Um, operators, they, they already hold, hold a lot of information on their consumers and it's often not very well monetized. So it sits there um, and often they don't do anything with it. Now, this data can be a really, really valuable source of revenue for operators, especially as it allows them to provide additional data points into the analytics engines that help decide which adverts to target towards the end consumer. So, for example, if as an operator, you know that I'm a big fan of watching comedy shows, um, and right now I'm watching a drama, it could be that the that information is fed back and uh, into the into the ad decision server and used to influence me towards more of an advert which tends towards maybe more of a, a comedic mindset. So by including this, great way to monetize that data as well. Now, if we look into maybe more uh, future looking um, use cases, um, 5G connected cars, they're almost interoperable in terms of uh, you know, people when they start talking about 5G and, and connected cars and as a result, self-driving vehicles. Um, I, I know there's a lot of cynicism around self-driving vehicles, but certainly five years ago, um, I don't think anyone had really predicted the, uh, the explosion that we've seen in the, the number of electric cars on the road. Um, so it's obviously a very, very rapidly evolving uh, ecosystem. Um, we're, off, we're also seeing cars now being fitted with very, very large central screens. We're seeing video services already being integrated into those central um, screens for when people aren't driving, for maybe when they're sat at a charger uh, or maybe when they've reached their destination. And taking all of this on board, you can then start to imagine a use case where adverts targeted um, towards a consumer, either maybe whilst they're waiting uh, for their car to charge at a location, or actually if the car's driving itself, maybe along a motorway, um, being a more realistic scenario than maybe uh, some other ones, it could be that people are actually watching video services either on their phones or their tablets, or even on a big central screen within the car. So the ability to then put an advert in there, which targets um, advertising towards something along the route or the final destination, which can be a known variable, becomes a very, very powerful way to bring advertising into a new space. 
And this is something we've already seen um, in, in a sort of kind of closely related thing. We've seen this with the likes of Waze, for example, when you um, are using Waze for your satellite navigation, you stop at a set of traffic lights and it flashes up an advert for a petrol station or a coffee shop along the way. So we can imagine bringing those kind of adverts into the video space to better monetize content as well. Now, if we're looking at these new kind of ad formats coming into the ecosystem, um, you know, things like AR, VR, 360 content, it's going to really lead initially to very, very high demand from advertisers, which will allow the, the operators, the broadcasters, the D2Z vendors to really um, expect a higher revenue, a higher CPM value, and as a result, bring in more revenue streams, which uh, we think is fantastic for them and fantastic for the industry. Thank you, Paul. And, um, you know, we all want to get started with 5G. So what uh, do our viewers need uh, to, to do so, Ganesh? So basically, from an advertising perspective, it will require two key dimensions, uh, you know, that we need to focus. One is in terms of experience and second is in terms of intelligence. Experience is the key and the features in terms of, you know, cross device support creative ad formats, immersive and interactivity with content, all this will enable that experience to connect with the ads. So experience is definitely one important dimension to definitely, you know, look at. And second is in terms of data, you know, data is worthless without actionable, you know, uh, 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 actionable insights and uh, intelligence and connected intelligence will drive that approach and this is going to be very critical given that you know just we spoke about how a digital consumers expectation is uh, is very unique and for that we need to understand a 360 degree view of a customer's digital life now with all these things what it means is for bringing the connected intelligence with 5g iot and multiple devices and wearables all this with a consumer uh, you know will have uh, we are talking about you know a lot uh, an opportunity that you know we can generate a, an unprecedented amount of data and speedy exchange and retrieval of data you know on on the base on the persona is location and many other attributes and all this bringing across an extreme personalized advertising that is targeted contextual and location driven that will appeal to the customers so this is very important aspect that is the experience and connected intelligence Apart from this, also, it's very important to look at some other aspects like, you know, we know that tax uh, weigh down the hats to streamline advertising and prepare for change. We'll see more focus on uh, real time pre bid algorithms for decisioning and measurements. It will be important to assess the current ad systems, maturity and infrastructure. And that may need a relook at the customer journey uh, and the strategy based on, you know, how to handle the massive uh, data. Uh, you know, in terms of how uh, we will handle that part of the of of the of the equation, and then you know how we will deliver that I N creative ads. So this will involve looking at bringing edge based analytics into the play. You know, we are looking at you know analytics and artificial intelligence playing a very critical role. Data repositories may require a redesign. New channel enablement will be will be required to be seen. And uh, you know optimization of programmatic option processes. So all this to you know it it requires a holistic approach, but keeping these two dimensions of experience and connected intelligence as a focus. So I think from my side, um, the first thing you need to start to consider is is ad preparation to ensure that the adverts match the format of the content they're being displayed with. Um, I mean, it starts off with very very simple things like audio level and resolu and, and resolutions. But also quality needs to be a very, very important part of this as well. So for a lot of our customers right now, um, broadcast quality and OTT is a really hot topic for them. Um, you know, reliability of having five nines, um, you know, very, very low latency and very, very high image quality is a real focus for them, which is why it's a real focus with our uh, Aquila portfolio at the moment. Now, if you start to bring that into the advertising space, you need to make sure the adverts are actually prepped in such a way or, or produced in such a way that they're able to adapt into these very, very high quality video ecosystems so that, for example, you don't start watching a very, very high quality 4K um, sporting event and then skip to a standard definition advert halfway through, keeping that consistency of experience to the consumer so it feels like a natural transition will be a very, very important consideration. Um, also in the sporting arena, um, deciding where to put the adverts in is going to be uh, a consideration as well. If we think about bringing in advertising into maybe um, OTT um, 
direct consumer um, type um, type of events, whether it be a motor race, whether it be football, rugby, cricket, whatever it is, you don't want to be going to an advert when there's an exciting overtake happening or um, you know, with a goal's about to be scored. So having the ability to actually decide live as the stream is being produced when you're going to go to an advert should be a really careful consideration when uh, when these content owners are preparing their content for distribution using these methods. Uh, lastly, I mean, we're, you know, edge caching, we feel, is going to be a, a really, really good way to reduce load on the core network. Um, now, this could be, again, increasingly important at sporting events where you could have a large number of people at um, in a very, very small location. And it could be that you wish to serve you know, a relatively small number of ads to a very targeted audience. So working out how you're going to pre-prep them, get them out there towards the edge of the network um, ahead of the ad break or ahead of the insertion should be something that, uh, that the, uh, certainly the operators are considering when it comes to their network design and the, the deployment of the software that goes out towards the edge of the network. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, this great uh, insight today. And so, um, you know, if if our audience um, had to take two to three key takeaways, um, so what would that be? And um, let's start with with you, Ganesh. What do you think is really uh, key for for uh, getting started with five G? Uh, so, with five G, experience will be the key driver, and exploring new revenues through new channels of delivering ads. Uh, new creative ad formats for delivery in ultra high definition video streaming and cloud gaming, etc., will define appeal of ads to a consumer. And you know, that will decide, you know, what type of appeal it is. Uh, is it a positive one or is it something that is making a consumer irritable or you know interesting? So so experience is going to be one key, you know, uh, thing that uh, I see I see as a very important area. Second will be connected intelligence, as I mentioned. It has to be a very data-driven approach. And when we are talking about data driven, it should be very, you know, uh, data that is uh, dynamic, right? Based on location and, and you know, based on uh, 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 where, you know, it is edge based, edge driven, where, you know, you know, the persona in terms of his purpose, his location. And all for this, you require, you know, a, a mix of many technologies coming together in terms of IoT, edge computing playing a role, artificial intelligence playing a very important role, all those building those context of the ads to a consumer. This will help achieve users growing demand for personalization, hyper-targeting and interactive advertising. So connected intelligence is very critical part. And the last is uh, what I feel is also the system's maturity and readiness. That will require to a relook in terms of, you know, uh, whether the platforms and uh, the systems are having the right maturity, whether the processes are in place, to, to you know, take advantage of the new advertising that is getting redefined with 5G. Uh, one other aspect will also be you know, looking into in terms of privacy. While we are talking about extreme personalization, privacy should be one of the top agenda to everyone in the 5G ecosystem. Maybe uh, you know, whether it is uh, operators or uh, platform players or content producers or, or an advertiser. You know? so, so the three key takeaways according to me will be experience, connected intelligence, and looking at the whole customer journey and systems maturity and privacy, all these things, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, whether it is uh, ready for, for the new uh, uh, de uh, new definition of advertising coming into the play with stage. So I think from me, um, if you're only giving me two or three, um, like the first one, I spoke to quite a few people ahead of this and bandwidth and connectivity, they're either super exciting because it's it's a nice headline figure and it looks really good um or it's just an enabler and it's not so interesting um either way you know they are definitely an enabler for video services and with the predicted 68 percent year on year growth for data and most of that being video um with 76 percent of that being uh, video by 2025 yeah, you know, that's a lot of video traffic for advertisers to target. So this is definitely a space that advertisers should be interested in. And therefore, it's something that uh, the broadcasters, operators, D2C vendors should be really focusing to make sure their ecosystems and their platforms are ready to take this on board. Um, number two, um, 5G networks, they're going to be more software centric. And with increased processing capacity towards the edge, um, it's really going to allow the caching and the distribution distribution of the software. So working out how you can design that, how you can implement that is going to be a really, really important um, 
thought process for the for the people deploying the network so make sure that they can enable some of these exciting use cases in there as well um, and lastly i'd say don't just focus on the advertising focus on the use cases around advertising i mean sports is a, a really really good example around this um, you know the ability to dynamically adjust the split of upstream and downstream bandwidth um, along with increased um, capacity makes advertising at sporting events um, you know um, with with video as a companion device a far more compelling uh, solution all of a sudden and that could be done either as a content owner that could be done by the uh, the sports arena themselves um, with a dedicated 5g network within the stadium so um, you know not just the advertising space very very important but also think about the use cases surrounding that as well and how you can make them better thank you very much paul for uh, for your takeaways um, as well and so um this is an interesting one uh, ganesh so uh, now we're moving on more to our uh, questions that we've received and thank you very much for having sent so many so we can't answer all of them but let's start with uh, the one that i have here so how will 5g help advertising evolve uh, according to you ganesh so with 5G, I, uh, you know, uh, as we have been uh, looking at, I think the focus will be more on video advertising. In fact, 5G would become the standard means to deliver, uh, you know, uh, terrestrial uh, television. And however, you know, it is expected that both uh, DTT and 5G de uh, delivery will coexist. So definitely, you know, video uh, will will be a very big focus. And, and, and that is something that, you know, definitely 5G will... Uh, will enable it because of uh, you know in terms of speed latency and and the overall experience that uh, that is expected to provide so that is something uh, that is one thing definitely i see second thing is we will see in the advertising more interactivity coming into the play so interactive hacks will become a big issue 5g with iot uh, given that there will be more devices wearables it's not going to be just you know one set of devices or smartphones that we are talking about so that provides a new set of opportunities coming into the play you know uh, for the for the advertising world and uh, as uh, i mentioned earlier that you know data driven approach with edge based analytics uh, delivering extreme personalization hyper targeting so all these things will help evolve the advertising and uh, and the most important and the last again from the experience perspective i feel that you know augmented reality virtual reality will help advertising evolve with new formats new ad formats coming into the play and uh, you know all these are the factors that i see as uh, as a catalyst uh, uh, you know uh, uh, for uh, for the advertising to shape up with 5g and um an interesting one as well uh, here paul so how can 5g make platforms more appealing to advertisers so i think a more connected consumer uh, who will be watching more video uh, vis more video services is very enticing for advertisers. Um, now, at some point, consumers are going to hit the limit on the number of services they're either willing or able to pay for. So we expect a big increase in the number of AVOD and freemium services in the market, and that's going to open up new channels for advertisers to address their target audience. So I, I think really there it's going to be around AVOD and, and freemium services and the increasing need for them in the marketplace. And uh, so um, here, this one that I was looking at, so what are key uh, emerging technologies that will enable consumer experience to target advertisements? So this one is for you, uh, Ganesh. Yeah, so, you know, with, so while 5G will bring that enhanced uh, broadband in terms of speed, reliability, ultra low latency, but I feel that there will be many other technologies that will, you know, uh, get enabled with 5G coming into the play. Some of them already existing today, like we are talking about uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, etc. So we see that, you know, along with 5G, uh, it will be very important that, you know, some of the other technologies will also start uh, playing a very important role. For example, we spoke about edge-based analytics, right? So edge will bring that low latency and make and making it a real time, especially with regard, you know, when we are talking about uh, 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 analytics and uh, 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 playing a very important role with not just uh, being more, uh, it's very dynamic, it's very location centric, knowing the persona, knowing the purpose, knowing the, you know, so it will become extremely dynamic. So definitely Hedge will play a role. We see location intelligence playing a role. 
IoT will be will be there with in terms of you know ability to handle uh, uh, many devices and variables to capture and push the data to the platform. Mobile advertising will have to prepare and orient towards uh, conversational assistance or voice conversations. Yeah, advertisers will require uh, to explore formats and ways to tap, uh, you know, into the realm of the voice-based advertising. Thus, I see that you know multiple other technologies will also surround with five G, and that will include edge, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, location intelligence, uh, uh, um, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, conversational assistant. All this will have to come together, and that is what exactly this together will create that you know consumer experience. Which will be very, you know, which will further help in targeted advertising. An interesting one as well um, here for you, Paul. So, um, how can advertisers ensure that they can address the wide range of of, of devices that will be connecting uh, over five G? So, I think this this touches on what we were discussing earlier. And first, we're ensuring that the adverts are delivered in broadcast quality. Uh, because the, the consumer's expectations are going to be there um, for, for very, very high quality um, delivery with, uh, with very, very low latency. Now, this is also going to become very, very important um, when we're looking at 5G. We're looking at 5G for full um, fixed um, access as well. So it could even be that 5G is um, not just putting in um, adverts on mobile devices, but also could be putting in adverts for the for the large TV in the corner of the living room, for example, as people start using 5G instead of having a wired um, fixed line connection. Uh, for advertisers, they really need to make sure they're working um, in, in ecosystems and setting the adverts into ecosystems that are able to properly um, prepare them, um, prepare them to a high quality, and prepare them to the wide range of formats that are out there to, to really get out there to the, the, um, the number of devices that are out there. And obviously, um, you know, media kind are experts in this area, and it's something we can definitely help them with if they need it. Hmm. And um, so looking at this one, what approach will drive consumer intelligence for targeted advertising? Uh, if you want to, to take that one, Ganesh. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, as I mentioned, you know, data driven strategy to define the targeted advert advertising to a consumer. In fact, uh, it's very important to move away from the centralized deterministic databases, which we have been, which has been existing for quite long. So, so data driven strategy is going to be very important. Uh, second is building the context, understanding the persona, place and purpose, you know, while serving the ads. So ads will require to be, you know, need to get the, uh, necessary intelligence to be processed and you know before you serve the ads. So context becomes a very important role. As mentioned, it is important that content and ad decisioning is housed close to the consumer to ensure ads loading time will keep up with the 5G capabilities. Uh, then you know the third is in terms of you know ability to handle massive data processed on the edge and recommendation provided to consumer through edge-based uh, advanced analytics and Okay, and the last is very important, you know, uh, uh, in symptoms of, you know, understanding and ensuring the regulatory compliance with respect to data privacy while defining extreme personalization. While we talk about extreme personalization, edge and uh, other things will bring to the table. But, you know, while we have to be very aware of the privacy and other regulatory compliance that needs to be ensured along with it. So viewers will seek better privacy and security for their device just as much as they want more control on over the content accessibility. So this is uh, these are the things that I feel is uh, will be very important. Thank you. And um, that one is uh, is uh, is challenging. Maybe we'll see, Paul. That's for you. So what areas uh, should our viewers not focus on when considering five G functionality in their future advertising use cases? I like that one. Um, I think a good one is ultra low latency. So the, the high guarantee of availability is great for the automotive and industrial sectors. Uh, and whilst it's a key feature for use cases such as the connected car one we were talking earlier, uh, we're already seeing latency as low as, as 20 milliseconds in 4G networks and getting to sub millisecond latency isn't really going to help us serve ads uh, much more quickly as far as the consumer is concerned. Um, the focus there really should be um, much more on making sure that the edge caching is set up properly on the network um, to uh, to enable the reduced loads on the core networks in uh, in those kind of use cases. 
thank you. And uh, this one for you, Ganesh. So, do you think will marketing processes like data collection be improved with five G? Uh, yeah, in, in fact, in a 5G world, right, we have, uh, you know, probabilistic data will become more robust due to the impending explosion of IoT devices and each of them a potential data source in itself. So we are going to see a massive, uh, you know, load of data from multiple devices and variables that needs to be handled on the edge uh, to improve and provide that real time insights. Uh, we will see industries focusing towards more high quality training data set and algorithms rather than the, as I mentioned, you know, it's very important to move away from the uh, centralized uh, uh, deterministic data. So a lot of focus will be on, you know, a dynamic aspect of uh, data collection. And while doing that, data quality needs to be, uh, you know, taken care and it should be ensured that the, it provides the right context and the system is able to process insights based on the persona, purpose and place. So, so for, so, you know, definitely, uh, this will bring a lot of, uh, you know, data collection process uh, improvement will be there, but it's all will be, you know, we'll have, it will be seen in terms of, you know, how the huge data sets are made available to both to the brands and the vendors with the same on-demand frequency. And I and 5G will spawn more data inputs, create more accuracy targeting models and enable marketers to finally uh, realize the vision of people-based marketing in the relatively near term uh, aspect. So definitely I see that, uh, you know, we, are, we will see a, quite a lot of data collection and improved data collection with good quality and contextual data uh, coming up with 5G. Thank you. And um, why would Paul advertisers want to uh, target TV advertising instead of other digital advertising platforms? So I, I read a very interesting report a couple of weeks ago from uh, Thinkbox TV um, and it showed that TV advertising has a level of trust that just it doesn't exist in any other advertising medium or platform. I think it was about 42 percent of people find TV advertising trustworthy compared to um, search and social media, which is around four to five percent. So it's, it's a huge difference there. Uh, TV advertising is is also far better for brand building as it sticks in the memory of the consumer for far longer. It's far more likely to engage with the consumer emotionally. So the result of that um, is that advertising recall is um, it is much, much longer. It can be as long as uh, two to three weeks in terms of a, an advert or a brand that people are recalling it two weeks later. That's not to say that um, digital can't or search can't be a very, very good accompaniment to that. And that's certainly something that advertisers need to take on board. Um, you know, if they are very, very hope, uh, heavily focused in search and uh, social media for the advertising today, um, you know, TV gives them the ability to build their brand. But we're not saying just go with TV. You know, keep with those other areas as well and work out how you can have a really sort of holistic approach um, across your advertising to take on board. Uh, as many opportunities as you can, but TV for the brand building is is really proven to be one of the uh, um, you know the, the best ways to get the brand out there, well known and well recognised. Thank you, thank you, Paul. And um, we've touched based on this one, but it's also great to uh, to um, to also see it from your perspective, Ganesh. So, how can advertisers uh, best prepare for five G? Uh, in fact, the first and foremost, I think the ad tech, ad data and supply vendors support will be definitely be required. You know, it's a, it's a, it's an ecosystem that needs to, you know, get engaged and, and make it happen. So a lot of support will be required. Uh, I see advertising platform and infrastructure will require a lot of revamp to handle massive data as well as to deliver the sophisticated advertisements. Uh, data repositories will, uh, will need a redesign. Edge-based analytics with artificial intelligence will need to introduce, you know, to bring that necessary intelligence and context. Uh, customer journeys will need to be relooked, and new areas of advertising will require to be addressed to create new revenue streams, uh, justifying the uh, ROI. And uh, and you know, ad platforms will require handling creative specs on ad formats and file sizes. We will see a lot of 3D models and many things coming into the play. So so we you know, uh, it's very important. A lot of preparation will go into the in terms of systems, processes, and the whole ecosystem, you know, coming together to make this happen. 
Thank you. So thank you, Ganesh, and thank you, Paul, for our 5G Insight session today. It was really, really uh, interesting topic. And I also thank uh, our audience for attending uh, this session today. We'll have definitely some more, so stay tuned, um, as we were saying at the beginning, on what's happening on our dot com for our future uh, sessions like these. And for all of the questions that you have given us and that we were unable to answer today, for sure we'll address them um, at some point when uh, this session is over. So thank you very much for uh, today and uh, we look forward to seeing you very soon here. Thank you. Thank you very much.